Have you ever stood in a subway station, looked around at the walls and wondered, why are there so many tiles down here? Maybe it's a bit grimy or covered in graffiti now, but if you look closely, you'll notice something deliberate about the design. It's not just for aesthetics and it's definitely not random. Today, we're diving deep underground to explore why so many subway tunnels, especially the older ones, are covered in tile. And spoiler alert, it has less to do with design flair and more to do with some very practical, even old-fashioned reasons. So let's break it all down, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's rewind to the early 1900s, when subways were just beginning to tunnel their way into major cities like New York and London. These were marvels of engineering at the time, but also huge public works projects that needed to function smoothly and safely for decades. The people designing subway tunnels had a pretty tough job. Underground environments are naturally dark, damp, and dirty. So engineers and architects were on the lookout for materials that could withstand those harsh conditions and still make the space navigable and pleasant enough for the daily commuter. Enter ceramic tile. Tiles were already being used in bathrooms, kitchens, and hospitals, anywhere that needed to be kept clean and hygienic. So using them in subway stations made perfect sense. They could be wiped down, they wouldn't absorb moisture like plaster or wood, and they added a sort of shine to a place that otherwise might feel like a cave. But there's more to it than just cleaning. Before the days of bright LED fixtures and well-lit transit systems, subway tunnels were relatively dim. Lighting was limited and not particularly energy efficient, especially in the early 20th century. So, how do you make a dark space feel brighter without adding a ton of extra lighting infrastructure? You use shiny surfaces. The glossy white or off-white subway tiles weren't chosen by accident. They were specifically selected because they reflect light. In a poorly lit station, even a small amount of illumination can bounce off those glazed tiles and brighten the surrounding area. That's also why you'll see tiles often used along the curves and walls of tunnels. They help guide your eyes in the right direction and give commuters a better sense of space and depth in a dark, otherwise flat environment. This was crucial, not just for comfort, but for safety. In the event of a power outage, dim emergency lighting could still illuminate the tiled walls enough for people to see exits, staircases, or signage. The light bouncing quality of tile essentially became a low-tech, low-energy lighting solution. Subway tunnels are, frankly, pretty filthy. There's dust from brakes, moisture from underground water, oil, soot, and let's not even get into what accumulates in the more neglected corners. In such a hostile environment, you want materials that won't degrade over time, and that's where tile really shines again. Ceramic tiles are non-porous, so they don't absorb the grime around them. Unlike painted concrete, which might stain, peel, or fade, tile can withstand frequent cleaning and scrubbing without losing its appearance or structural integrity. Tiles can also be replaced individually if damaged, rather than resurfacing an entire wall. That modular nature was a huge bonus in long, sprawling systems, where small repairs need to be done quickly and without disrupting thousands of daily commuters. So while it might look like a decorative choice, tiling was really a clever solution to a problem that still exists in subway systems today. How do you keep a public space relatively clean and functional when it's buried deep underground and constantly exposed to both people and the elements? Here's a subtle function that often goes unnoticed wayfinding. In older subway systems, especially ones like the New York City subway, tile patterns weren't just about covering walls, they helped people find their way. Station names were often embedded directly into the tilework in unique fonts and colors. This wasn't just decorative, 
It was essential in an era before digital signs or automated announcements. In fact, some stations use color-coded tile bands or distinct mosaic styles to help passengers know where they were or when their stop was approaching. For example, certain tiles might appear in a repeating pattern across multiple stations, but only one would have a specific motif or color indicating a major transfer point. Riders who couldn't read English, or who were just paying half attention, could still navigate the system visually. It was a thoughtful design language built right into the walls. So when you see old subway stations with intricate tile mosaics, you're not just looking at art, you're looking at one of the earliest forms of user interface design. It was visual engineering before we had digital UX. So why don't we see as many tiled tunnels in newer subway systems? The short answer is, Material science has moved on. Modern construction often favors materials like stainless steel panels, precast concrete, or vandal-resistant polymers that offer similar durability and cleanliness, but at a lower cost or with quicker installation. Some cities even use treated paints or cladding that mimic the feel of tiles without the extra labor involved in setting each one individually. Also, subway systems now rely heavily on digital signage, LED lighting, and CCTV cameras. So reflective surfaces and built-in signage aren't as crucial as they used to be. Still, many stations choose to include tile in more decorative ways, especially in high traffic or high profile areas. It's a nod to the tradition, and in some cases, a restoration of that old world charm. So the next time you're standing on a subway platform, take a look around. Those tiles weren't just slapped on the walls for looks. They were a smart, multi-purpose solution to a whole list of underground challenges. They helped keep stations brighter, cleaner, safer, and even more beautiful. They guided travelers, absorbed the daily grind, and stood the test of time, quite literally. Subway tiles are one of those quiet design choices that blend into the background, yet carry a surprising amount of history and utility behind them. And now that you know, you'll never look at them the same way again. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.